Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online. Another, as I like to say, another beautiful Sunday morning here at our Leader First Assembly of God Church. Well, listen, I'm just so glad once again that we can connect together for Church Online. I want to make just a couple of announcements, and one of them is our staple announcement, and that is TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Every Friday, 7 o'clock, there's something for the entire family. I also want to just say thank you so much to many of you who've been so faithful, uh, very, very faithful during these difficult times we've been in these past several years. You've been faithful with what we call the three T's at First Assembly. You've been faithful with your talent, your treasure, and your time. And I want to say thank you for that. That's what makes the Church of Jesus Christ such a great thing, is people who are committed to the Lord and committed to each other. So thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord. I just want to ask you as well, if you would remember uh, several of our members in prayer, some of our, our members who have been with us at First Assembly for many years are in need of prayer physically, so thank you in advance for keeping them in prayer and for the church family. Well listen, let's just uh, pause now, just before we get into the message for a time of praise and worship to the Lord. He alone is worthy, and there is nothing, there's nothing quite like worshiping God for who He is and what He has done. And really, it's why He made us. He made us to love us, and He made us so that we can worship Him and praise Him for His goodness. So, let's just join together now and enjoy a time of praise and worship as the worship team comes to lead us in praise at this time. So God, we surrender to you. We give you our hearts, God. We give you our adoration, Lord. We celebrate you right now, Lord. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, and you're working in. i 
you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working Yeah, it goes against your nature, you're a loving God Ooh. Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working you work here you never stop you never stop working you never stop stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop well thank you so much worship team for leading us in worship and praise this morning as i mentioned just before the worship team came to lead us there's nothing like praising and worshiping the lord for who he is well this morning we want to continue in a series of messages we've started several weeks back on, on, on building our faith in the Lord. How do we do that? And of course, we talked about sowing and reaping, planting and harvesting over the past several weeks and the importance of that there. But there's another way in which we can build our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's what I want to look at this morning. And I, I want to look in particular at this word commitment. Commitment. Well, what is commitment? Looked it up in the dictionary, and I thought I would just write it out. It says, the act of binding yourself intellectually and emotionally to a cause or to an action. Now listen, and I think we can all agree on this here, that, that our, lives, our lives are shaped, who you are and who I am, they are shaped by the commitments that we make. The bottom line is we become whatever we're committed to. If you don't commit yourself to anything in life and you're just existing from day to day, then you'll become nothing really in life. And so you're shaped and I'm shaped. We're formed. We become who we are by the commitments that we make. And it's important. I usually will share this with a married with a couple who's getting married this ceremony when I talk about commitment and how important commitment is. And commitment's important for you and I on a daily basis. But I've said this here, that commitment is doing what you said you would do after, long after, the mood or the feeling you said it in has long gone. And that's, <laughs> excuse me, that's what commitment is. So I want us just to think about this too this morning, is that great people and this is the truth. Great people are just ordinary people who've made a great commitment to a cause that is much greater than themselves. And as a result of it, they've bounced out of the ordinary and become have become extraordinary in the hands of the Lord. So nobody really is naturally uh, great just because. You're not naturally great. I'm not naturally great. 
We're, uh, we're just normal, ordinary people. But when we make the right commitments in our lives, we make commitments in our lives to biblical principle, to biblical values, then we become extraordinary people in the hands of the Lord. Now, we live in a time where nobody wants to make a commitment to anything. Um, nobody does. Uh, you ask somebody for commitment, and boy, oh boy, does it take them a long time to respond. If you can get a response, either a yes or a no, or, well, gee, I wish you'd have given us more time to, to hear about this, and you've talked with them, you know, a month in advance. Uh, but, but really, it's tough. Nobody wants to make a commitment anymore. And there just is, even as we look at our country as a whole, there's just not... A, uh, a loyalty or a desire to make a commitment to making our land a better place. It's kind of like, I re it reminds me a little bit about, about me when I'm usually visiting family in Las Vegas. I've got this favorite place to go for a buffet. Just a great price, great food. And so I always find myself at that buffet. I'll get my tray and then I'll start from one end and I'll look and I don't want to make a commitment to get something because I think I wonder what's down the line a little bit. And so I get there, I still don't make any, I find myself at the end of the line, I look at my tray and my plate and there's nothing in it. And the reason why there's nothing in it is because I wasn't me. I didn't want to make a commitment to something early on feeling I've missed something else a little bit later on down <laughs> the, the aisle. And sometimes that's the way that we are in life. We we just don't want to make a commitment because we want to see what's down there. And we get down there and we end up with an empty plate. We end up really paralyzed, not doing or going anywhere, or doing anything because we didn't want to make a commitment. And so, you, uh, but, but what we find out though really is you, you, you really can't live life without making a commitment. We've got to be people who learn how to make commitments. Not just, you know, at any whim, but to make a commitment to, a, to an, it, something that's important outside of ourselves. It's important for us to make these commitments. And you can't make, you can't, really you can't live life without making commitments. And I think you know that. I, you might say, well, no, I, I, I but, but you do. You had to make a commitment in order to purchase the home that you're in. You may not be a, a homeowner. You might be a person who is renting your home. Well, you still had to look at several different options that were out there. Do I like this home? Do I not like this home? Does it look like they've got neighbors, great neighbors or not? And so we go through these different questions in our minds um, before we make a commitment, but we've got to make a commitment if we're going to purchase that house or rent that home. How about buying a car? You know, we could go on that car lot and we could see some of the nicest vehicles and think, oh boy, I'm not sure. Um, but at some point, you've got to make a commitment say, it's that vehicle there, that's the one that I want. You have to make a commitment for your, for your job. Uh, you can't get married without making a commitment to that person that you're, making, that you're making vows to before the Lord and witnesses. you uh, you got to make a commitment to them. So commitments, really, they bring definition, they define who you are. It defines who I am. It defines our lives. And I, there's a book that was written by Andy Stanley, and it's, it, uh, the title is Better Choices, Fewer Regrets. And I thought, man, you know, the title of that book is worth the price of the book all by itself. Um, better choices, fewer regrets. Or we can say better commitments, fewer regrets. Now, the Bible says a lot about, about commitments, and I want to read a couple of passages of Scripture. In Romans chapter 6, verse 13, it says, Give yourselves completely to God. That's commitment. Offering yourself, giving yourself completely to God, that's a, a commitment. Uh, every part of you, for you have been uh, brought back to life in Christ, and you want to be tools in the hands of God, used for his good purposes. The, listen, that's the highest commitment that you will ever make or that you can ever make, and that's committing your life 
to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he made you for. There's another familiar passage of scripture found in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. And it says something pretty much the same thing, similar to what we just read. It says this here. Since God has shown us great mercy, and he has, great grace and mercy, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice. And there's that word, offer yourself. In other words, make that commitment, that sacrifice. Embrace what God is doing and has done for you. It says, your offering must be only for God and pleasing to Him, which is a spiritual way for you and I to worship the Lord. Now there are some needs that we have, every one of us. I have deep needs. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you have deep needs. Um, and we want to look at some, some things this morning in the scriptures that, that talk to us about how those deep needs that we have can be filled by making commitments. And so we want to look at those this morning. And they come from really two powerful passages in the New Testament. And we look at them and we call them, one of them is called the Great Commission. Uh, and another one is called the Great Commandment. And you know what those are. I think when I start to quote the scripture, you'll go, yeah, I, I, uh, I have heard that. Uh, but the, the, uh, the great commandment that the Lord Jesus talks to us about, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the, uh, the, the great commandment. And then the great commitment, you'll remember, is Jesus said, you know, go out and make disciples, baptize them, teach them how to walk with me, uh, share with them. Now, we've, uh, there's kind of an acrostic that we can, we can use to help us remember really what the purpose of the church is for uh, folks like you and I, followers of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and I've looked at it in this way here, that you can look at the, use it as the acrostic, W-I-F-E, wife, W-I-F-E, W for worship, I for instruction, discipleship, F for fellowship, and E is for evangelism, sharing the good news, the gospel message of Jesus Christ with those that don't know or have not heard of him. And so let's look at these, these uh, five things, five ways in which uh, we can make commitments to in our lives. And they have everything to do with the, uh, the great commandment and the great commission. Uh, really, that's where these five things that we'll look at this morning come right out of. And I think the first one is here, is for my faith to get strengthened. For my faith to be strengthened in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's extremely important for me and for you to join others in worship and praise to the Lord every single Sunday morning, giving it our, 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 our very, very best. Listen, this is what, what, what attending... A, uh, a church, a church fellowship. What it does for us is it it, re it renews our faith. It restores joy in our souls. This is what the uh, scripture says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen, it's important for us to gather together, uh, in the scriptures it talks about, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves uh, together. It's important for us to be together, to worship together, to praise together, because it restores our soul. It, uh, it, it adds life to us. It's a, it brings joy to us. It brings peace to us when we gather with, with others that are like precious faith with us. And I know... I'm not any different than anybody else. There's times where, you know, I've been out really late for maybe a church function or a, uh, a function that we've been invited to attend, and it has gone really, really late. And we get home really, really late on that Saturday evening. We try not to do that very often, but periodically, you'll get home really, really late Saturday evening. You wake up Sunday morning, and man, you are tired. I've been there where you kind of are shaking your head thinking like, boy, I'm not sure 
that I've got it in my tank to, uh, to, to get going. And yet, it's a commitment that we make. And we find ourselves, because we're committed to Christ, we make our way there anyway. Listen, I can't tell you how many people I know who have said, man, I was so tired Monday morning, I didn't want to go to work. But guess what they did? They went to work anyway, didn't they? You've been there. And uh, listen, this is one thing I found about, about fellowship with the people of God. Getting there on Sunday mornings, whether you feel like it, a lot of times you feel like it, sometimes you may not. But if you will make that commitment to get there, you'll find yourself in praise and worship, and then you'll see passages of Scripture on the PowerPoint, and you'll hear the Word of God, and there'll be times of prayer together. And, you know, I can't tell you a time that I can remember when I've gone to church on a Sunday morning and have left and said, man, uh, what a bummer it was. I wished I wouldn't have been there today. I never said that in, uh, in, in many, many years in ministry. I can say, I can honestly say that, that I've never left, the, left a Sunday morning thinking like, what a drag, how horrible that was. I, uh, man, I'm, I'm sad that I went. I've not uh, been there before. Listen to what the Bible says about worship and fellowship and coming to the Lord together. It says uh, in the Psalms, it says, Worship the Lord. Psalm 100, 100 verse number says, Worship the Lord with what? With gladness. Come before Him with singing, with joy. Um, so let's, let, let me, it says, I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Um, not, I was mad, not, I was sad, not, I was bummed out. It said, no, uh, listen, I was glad when I went to the house of the Lord. And I tell you what, I think that church is a, uh, is a, it's a holy time. It's a fun time. It's an exciting time. It's a glad time. It's a joyous time when we come together and, uh, worship team begins to play and they start singing and we start singing and we start clapping our hands and worshiping God. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's a, uh, it's a wonderful time when we're able to gather together to worship the Lord. And I have found this here, that if there is a down feeling or there's worry or there's anxiety, you start to worship the Lord and there's just something about it. The presence of Jesus comes into the place and, uh, and just washes, just drowns and floods out that stuff that's there. So it energizes us and it restores us. I like what the psalmist said, David said in Psalm 23, verse 4, he said, He restoreth my soul. And I can truly say this here, is that's what happens to me every Sunday morning. I can say, well, He restoreth my soul. He invigorates me. He uh, gives me life. The second thing is, um, this builds our faith <coughs> is um, um, as we discover we discover who we are we discover our identity our purpose in life when we connect with other people in fellowship I listen I've got to do it you got it we, we we must do it and that's to connect with others in fellowship because listen we really only learn who we are and how we function, and what we're like when we're in relationship with other people. Listen, if you lived your entire life all by yourself, you never had contact, no interaction with anybody else, you wouldn't know a whole lot about yourself, would you? And uh, that's one of the wonderful things about coming together with others who are followers of Jesus Christ, and uh, we develop in who we are, and, and uh, we have exchange with each other. The scripture says, iron sharpens iron, uh, so one man sharpens another. And that comes through fellowship in, uh, in relationship with the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verses number 4 and 5 says this here. We are speaking about all those who are followers of Jesus Christ, you and I. Uh, it says this here. We are like various parts of the human body. And that's what Jesus likens us to, his church, like a, uh, like a functioning, uh, a, a, a live body. He said, um, we are like various parts 
of the human body. Each part gets its meaning. And that's something, if you, ever, you have your Bible open, you might want to even circle that there. Um, each part gets its meaning, gets its meaning from Christ's body as a whole, not the other way around. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of the body, but as, uh, as, as a part of, but as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much. We wouldn't amount to much, would we? And that's from the, uh, the, message, the, uh, the message Bible. And how true that is. Think about that. When, you, when Jesus likens his church, uh, the church fellowship, to a body. Um, listen, um, I don't have just fingers. I've got fingers, but I've also got an arm. I've got a, a pinky. I've got a thumb. I have feet. And they're all important to each other. I have a nose. I have eyes, I have ears, you know, none of them, you know, cut off and put off a sight would be of any value to, to itself. But when you bring them all together, my eyes are together, my ears, my nose, my fingers, my feet, my legs. Listen, the, uh, the, the intellect that God blesses us with, you know, they each have their part and we need these parts of our body. And so it is in the church. Listen, friends. We need, we need each other. We need each other to find and to see our purposes fulfilled. Uh, and so, you know, we can even even say this, you know, how will we know our value unless we're connected with other followers of Jesus Christ? And listen, the Lord's the one that invented the church. He's the one that created the church. And he created us to, uh, to be a, a, uh, a source of reconciliation to those who are around us that may not be followers of Christ. Listen, I, that's the church. The church is not, you know, some people are here, others are there. No, the, uh, the church of Jesus Christ, we're all one. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter your, your ethnicity. It doesn't, doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor, you're black, brown, white, uh, yellow. It doesn't matter. When we come to the church, we are all one in Christ. He died for each and every one of us equally. And his church is to be a place where at the cross they say the ground is level. It's not here, here, no. We all have access to relationship with the Lord. And the Lord wants us to be a church of, of one. You know, my father, father-in-law pastored a church uh, before he went home to be with the Lord. He pastored in Richmond. And the, uh, the demographics of where he was is there was African American, Hispanic, there was Asian, uh, the Caucasian. I mean, there was everything in that area. And uh, I remember going to his church on many occasions when uh, Terry and I would, would be visiting, perhaps on vacation or we're traveling through. And uh, I remember attending church there on a Sunday morning and looking around and I thought, you know what, I think this place, this place has the feel of what heaven will be like because there, uh, there wasn't any one ethnicity that you could pick out and say, oh, this is the dominant uh, uh, culture here. No, there was some of every, of every race, uh, every language. They were there worshiping and praising God and I thought that's what heaven will be like. Uh, folks from every race, every background, rich, poor, in between, all together worshiping and praising the Lord. And that's, again, what I believe heaven will be like. Well, the third thing that is important for us to make a commitment to is making a commitment to other people as well, to, uh, to, to being together with them. We, we see our, our potential who we are develop tremendously when we find ourselves in fellowship with other people. We grow. We uh, find ourselves growing spiritually. And that can only happen. Listen, that can only happen when we are in community. For instance, how are you going to learn about forgiveness if you're all by yourself? How are you going to learn about relationships and how they work if you're just by yourself? 
Uh, how are you going to learn about what the meaning of loyalty is if you're not in relationship with others? See, you can't learn this stuff all by yourself. That's why God has us and says, listen, he places us in a, 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 a fellowship, a body of believers, followers of Christ, and, uh, and we connect in community. And as a result of it, we learn, because you can't learn without other people. You can't learn faithfulness without other people. You can't learn graciousness without other people. You can't learn generosity without other people. And, and, and so we can see that you know, being a part of a community, a godly community, is absolutely critical and it's key to us growing in Christ. Well, listen to what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16 says. It says, Christ's body is fitted together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. We need each other to, uh, to grow and to develop and to become more like Christ in our lives. And then the, uh, the fourth thing that we want to make a commitment to is, is listen, making a commitment to serve with others in ministry. Um, ministry is, how would I say it? Ministry is just a, a word that, uh, that means doing good to other people. That's ministry. If you're doing good, to other people, you're investing in other people, you're investing kindness in other people, you're investing um, uh, uh, finances for help, you're investing uh, wisdom, you're, you're investing help with them. That's all ministry. You're, uh, anything that you give and you invest in other people is ministry. So ministry is just a word for doing good to other people. Doing good to other people is what ministry is. We talked about this last week about the importance of planting seeds in our lives. Because if we're faithful in planting seeds of words, kindness, appreciation, it has a way of growing and coming back. It's a law of the harvest. If you plant, you're going to harvest. If you sow seed, it's going to grow. Uh, that's the way it is. And so, so ministry really, I look at ministry as, is really a lot like being a farmer. You're, uh, you're doing good to other people. You're planting seeds. And that's ministry. So significance in our lives. Significance in your life. I want you to know it doesn't come from status. It doesn't come from you driving around a vehicle with some kind of an emblem on that car. It doesn't come with a watch you wear, a ring you wear, house you live in, the, uh, with your, the size of your checking account. Um... Significance doesn't come from status. Nothing wrong with a nice watch, nothing wrong with a nice ring, nothing wrong with a nice car, uh, nothing wrong with a, uh, a, a but that's but that's not where significance comes from. It doesn't come from significance comes and, and remember this significance comes from service, from serving other people for planting in other people's lives. I like what first what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 10, it says, Each of you has received, listen, has received a gift to use to serve. For yourself? No. That's not what it says. Each of you has received a gift to use to serve others. And that's where we find tremendous significance in our lives when we do just that there. And then the last thing that we uh, want to look at is making a commitment to this here, making a commitment to be on mission, to have a mission in our heart, no, with, and that mission is to sharing the gospel message of Jesus Christ, uh, to make an eternal difference in somebody's life. When we're committed to that, listen, we'll, uh, we'll find ourselves really feeling contented, we'll feel, feel ourselves being fulfilled by the Lord because we're doing what He called us to do, what He made us to do. The uh, Matthew chapter uh, 20, 28, it's, it's really you know, all lined out right here. It says, go and make disciples. This is, 
Jesus' words to us, his disciples, he said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to do everything that I have commanded you. And surely, Jesus said, surely, I will be with you. Listen, remember this here. You are what you are committed to. You are what you are committed to. Listen, I want to challenge you this morning. Make a fresh commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a commitment to His church. Make a commitment to community. Make a commitment to godly relationships. Make a commitment to the Great Commission. Make a commitment to the Great Commandment. And you'll find yourself, you'll find yourself fulfilled in your life. And the Lord wants to fill you with purpose, with joy, with peace, and uh, knowing where you're going. So let's make some commitments today, this morning. Let's not let this day go by and say, I'm going to make a fresh commitment to you, Lord Jesus, in these areas of my life. Lord, we thank you that we have had this time together this morning to look into the scriptures, to look at the word, to look at what it means to make a commitment and how our lives are blessed as a result of making those commitments. We become a fulfilled people. Lord, I pray for your rich blessing to rest upon your people. Lord, for those in our congregation that are in, in desperate need of a touch from you this morning, I pray that you would minister to them, that you'd bring healing to their bodies. And Lord, we'll be so grateful for that. We pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Well, God bless you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you at TGIF. God bless you, everyone.